Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking all things hair care. Disclaimer, I'm not a trichologist, I'm not a hairdresser, I'm not a scalp specialist, I don't really know a lot about hair apart from all the science I've personally researched and from my own experience. So these tips might not resonate with, a, with everyone but it's what I did to achieve the hair I have now, which is a big improvement to what I did have when I first started. So yeah, I'm just sharing from my personal experience, please don't take this as like a qualified lesson, because that is not what I'm offering. First things first, and my first number one tip is if you do have a lot of breakage, you have a lot of dry end, your hair is really damaged, you've got to get rid of the split ends, because even though you can grow your hair with split ends, the problem with that is your hair is growing very weak, very thin, and it will just end up snapping off and being really uneven and unhealthy. So the best thing to do is just to get rid of it. If you do not want to go for a big chop, I would suggest just getting an inch off to start with. And you can do this at home. I mean, I don't know if I should be saying that, but I did my haircuts all at home and I still do now because I don't like going to the hairdresser and I like, I just find cutting my own hair quite easy. So yeah. I did it at home. Just start off with an inch and then what you want to do, here's my magic tip, is when you're sitting watching TV or instead of scrolling on your phone, just get a pair of scissors. If you can purchase hairdressing scissors, that is the best, best option. But if not, then just like use any scissors you have. But the best option for the best results would be hairdressing scissors. And what you want to do is just sit there while you're watching TV or whatever and just go through your hair. Push it out like this and you can see all the breakage come up and just chop them off because not every single strand of hair is going to be broken and damaged. So if you just go through and if you do this every night, you're going to get rid of quite a lot of split ends. So I think that is the best thing to do if you do not want to chop off all your hair and that is personally what I did and makes a massive difference. I still do it now so I'll just sit there. I probably do it like once or twice a week now. Um, and just cut off any split ends I see basically and they're not hard to spot because they don't look very nice so <laughs> it's quite easy to spot where they are. That is my first tip, get rid of the nasties and your hair will thank you for it. You've got rid of your split ends and now you actually want to focus on how to make your hair look healthier, grow healthier and grow faster. My number one tip is wash your hair as often as you need to and there's so many conflicting sides to this. Uh, a lot of people say you shouldn't wash your hair too often because it dries your hair out. A lot of other people say that you should wash your hair as much as you want um, because it's good for your scalp and if you leave it longer then you get build up on your scalp which doesn't promote healthy hair growth. My personal opinion, if your hair's oily, wash it. I wouldn't leave my hair to get oily. One, I really don't like the look and the feel of greasy hair. I wash my hair I would wash my hair every day if I needed to and I wouldn't have a problem with it but I probably wash my hair every other day if not at least three or four times a week just because that is what I'm comfortable with and as soon as my hair gets a bit oily or greasy I'm washing it. I wash it straight after exercise, I do not let my scalp sit in the sweat from exercise because you want for healthy hair growth your scalp, put it this way, your hair grows from your root, from your scalp, this is where all the growth comes from so this needs to be the best environment possible for this to grow healthy and fast so as long as you're looking after your scalp the rest should do its thing so if you have an oily scalp and you wash your hair and the next day it's still greasy it's greasy again wash it it's fine the best and the most important thing is having a healthy clean fresh scalp and that also means detoxifying or clarifying your scalp as well and this can be done as often as you need to. I would do this as often as you need. Always double shampoo because the first shampoo, it's basically like your skin. We, we are always told to double cleanse our skin because the first one removes the makeup, the dirt and the second one actually deep cleanses the scalp just to make sure you've got rid of everything so it's, it's literally the same thing for our hair. So that's what you want to do and I would use the detox shampoo first and then if you're washing your hair every day just you can use this shampoo every day it's fine. As long as you've got like a really conditioning 
conditioner, <laughs> a really good hydrating conditioner, you'll be fine. And obviously the most important thing, like I said, is looking after your scalp. So you wanna get a shampoo that's specific to your scalp needs. If you have oily hair, get a clarifying shampoo. If you have a dry scalp, get a more nourishing shampoo. It's completely up to you. The shampoo is essentially looking after your scalp and the conditioner is gonna be looking after your ends. So they don't have to be the same brand. I've got a few recommendations. So my favorite drugstore shampoo and conditioner is actually the same brand, it's the same thing set it's the dove intensive repair so if you've got really damaged hair you're gonna love this it makes your hair really soft no sulfates are not bad for you in my opinion or silicone silicones i use them and i love them and i'll always use them we need them to protect our hair to grow strong and if you're clarifying your hair at least once a week there's no issues with it so that is my opinion but i absolutely love this dove and you can find it anywhere like honestly it's everywhere and it's really really affordable and then my favorite hair masks from the drugstore are always going to be the garnier hair foods um i've got this watermelon one i've also had the banana one the papaya one i think they're incredible value for money i would personally never go four days without washing my hair because it's got a lot of build up even if your hair doesn't get oily, visibly oily or greasy, you're still gonna have so much build up in your scalp because of environmental factors like dirt, dirt from your pillowcase, like everything. So that's just a personal preference. If you wanna grow your hair healthy and long, I wouldn't go too long without washes because your scalp is the best friend. And as long as you're using conditioning products on your ends, you'll be fine. Okay, so tip number three was technically double shampoo. So I'm not gonna go into that one. It's self-explanatory. You wanna make sure you are deep cleansing your scalp because scalp care is number one priority. Also, another tip, if you do have dry ends and you shampoo your hair more often, what I would do is apply an oil to my ends. So again, you don't have to do this. If you have a hair mask, you can just put a hair mask on before you wash. I typically leave it about 30 minutes before I wash it out, just so it coats the hair. I love the OGX coconut oil. I love the Miel, 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 Miel whatever this is, rosemary oil, and I love the L'Oreal oil. Any oil's fine, like honestly, because it does coat. My favorite one for pre-shampoo though is the coconut oil. But if you don't have those and you have a hair mask, just use the hair mask. Anything will do. It just protects the hair and ensures it's not going to dry out too much whilst you're shampooing. Next tip to sleep with your hair in a protective hairstyle. Um, whatever that is comfortable for you, honestly, don't deep it too much. I know everyone says, like, you should wear your hair in a high bun on top of your head that's really loose. Or you should wear, like, wear whatever hairstyle you want at night. Because, honestly, sleep is still so important. But... If you want to have the healthy hair growth and you don't have the money to buy like a silk or satin pillowcase, just wearing it in a loose braid or a loose ponytail will be fine. It just kind of ensures that all of your hair is in one place and not spread out across your pillow like rubbing and causing friction. So that is the next tip. And also never go to sleep with your hair wet. Never tie your hair up when it's wet. Never be horrible to your hair when it's wet. I didn't have to say your hair is so fragile when it's wet. That's when it's the most like vulnerable. So we need to be looking after it like it's an actual newborn baby when it's wet. Um, a lot of contradiction as well, whether to air dry versus blow dry. I would always suggest you do what's best for you. However, if you have any scalp conditions like flakiness, itchiness, psoriasis, dandruff, you want to be blow drying at least all of your roots because when you leave anything to air dry, even our face, our skin, our body, it is a breeding ground for bacteria and yeast build up. So it's going to cause more of that flakiness and itchiness and it's just gonna be uncomfortable. So I would always suggest blow drying, even if you are washing your hair every day and you've got one of these conditions, you need to be just blow drying your scalp. If you don't have any of these conditions, air drying is honestly fine. There's not enough research one versus the other. I think there's like one research paper that showed that blow drying was actually less damaging than air drying. But to be honest, I think it all depends on how much you wash your hair. If you're washing your hair every day, you don't want to be putting heat on your hair every day. I kind of just play it by ear, to be honest. If I'm doing something and it needs to be dry, I'll blow dry it. I always blow dry it on a medium seat, heat setting and never the highest. And always away, quite a distance away from my hair just to limit the amount of breakage as much as possible but then some days I will air dry I'll leave it in my 
like microfiber hair towel for about half an hour and then when I'm air drying the most important thing for me is that I'm not moving around a lot and it's not rubbing on the back of like the sofa or anything so I will just divide it like it is now to be honest and make sure that I'm not leaning against anything so that my hair is rubbing against anything because that's what's going to cause damage at the end of the day because like I said when my hair is wet it's very vulnerable to breakage so we just want to make sure that if we are air drying we're not whooshing it around everywhere and you know causing unnecessary damage but if you do worry about that then just blow dry I honestly don't think there's much in it I think it's up to you it's up to you what you want to do I feel blow drying is going to make your hair look better than air drying personal opinion but if you don't feel comfortable with that amount of heat on your hair every single week then just air dry and it should be fine. Next tip would be to just generally cut down on the amount of heat you're using in the week. So not necessarily talking about hair drying here because like I said if you have to wash your hair every single day and you do have like psoriasis or dandruff so you have to blow dry your scalp every day that's something you can't really control. So personally I only style my hair once or twice a week max so even if I'm blow drying it I'll just rough dry it I won't I won't style it or anything and that's that and if I'm not blow drying it I may straighten it or I may curl it but that's very rare for me to be honest if anything I'm leaving my hair natural because that is the best way for it so when you're styling it it looks really really good I feel like that's the main tip is Remember your hair is not going to look perfect every day and a lot of influencers look like they have perfect hair every day. Their hair does not look like that every day. Trust me, nobody's hair looks perfect, glossy, shiny, bouncy every single day. That's probably the first day of their hair wash or, you know, second day and they've just styled it. But your hair isn't going to look perfect every day and if you want to focus on the health of your hair, you have to accept that it's going to look normal. Like it's just not going to look like amazing every single day. If you wanna make the most out of styling it, I would definitely suggest just leaving your hair natural most of the time so that when you do have an occasion or you're going out for dinner and you really wanna style your hair, it's going to look like such a difference because you're not putting heat on it every single day and your hair is in a more natural state so when you style it, it makes more of a difference to your appearance and to the health of your hair because your hair is going to be a lot shinier because you've not overdone it with the heat, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense at all but in my head it, it makes sense. Like, It's like not wearing makeup every single day, you know? Like you look so much different when you put makeup on for a special occasion than if you used to wear it every day, you just look like you just wear makeup every day, you know? In my head that really makes sense but I don't know if it's going to make sense in this video but basically what I'm trying to say is you do not need to style your hair every single day but at the end of the day if it is something that makes you feel more confident and better about yourself then that's fine just please do not use heat every single day and if you are you need to be using heat protector and a lot of it a lot of it don't just use it once and then think because you straightened your hair yesterday and you heat protect you can straighten it again no no more heat protector but yeah, I really wouldn't use heat more than twice a week if you're styling it purposely. Like I said, blow drying is a completely different story. I could use a blow dryer every single day and as long as I'm using heat protectant and I'm not styling it so the heat isn't directly on my hair, it's fine. So that's the next tip. That concludes my hair tips for this video. I guarantee if you do these tips, your hair is going to start becoming a lot healthier looking, grow a lot quicker and just feel a lot nicer. It's going to take time, obviously you can't speed up the growth of your hair much but there's things we can do that can aid our hair growth a lot. So that is the purpose of this video. I really hope you gained some insightful information and if not then I'm sorry but I'm trying my best. I'm not good with these like chatty, um, what are they called, like chatty helpful videos because I don't feel like I should be giving you this advice because I'm not professional but this is just my personal opinion so sorry for rambling off your ear for so long but I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a massive thumbs up if you have any questions or any other videos that you want to see like this comment down below let me know and I'll film them for you but I love you all so much and good luck on your hair growth journey